I got a box, not just any kind of box. My friend over at Histobrick sent these along for us to check out. I gotta deviate from what I usually do here on this channel, but then again, this channel is about history and learning about history, and this is sorta of going to be a review. I did do that trumpeter Titanic kit video, and this is gonna be a little bit along those lines. Let's first open it up before I go into more detail. I'm packing peanuts. I've always loved Legos. I don't think I've built a Lego kit in about 15 years. But these are my first ones since then. I'm gonna put them together and I'm gonna tell you what I think of them. First impressions, I like the packaging. You can tell it is an independent startup company, but it's still, it's still well done, it's still professional looking. All right, so why don't we jump right into these? I'm going to open them up right here live on camera and then build them through. It's gonna be a bit of a time lapse so you guys don't have to sit through everything I'm sitting through. These are Lego kits from a company called Histobrick. And what they focus on doing is recreating subjects from history. I believe they're gonna branch out, but as of now, they have only done ships. I have the RMS Titanic, the RMS Carpathia, the SS Edmund Fitzgerald, and the HMHS Britannic. They are also working on the Olympic as a uh, troop transport during the First World War, but as of now, that is not ready. Before we go into the first kit, these will all be available on www.titanichg.com, and if you click store, you'll get a drop-down menu, and just click Histobrick. This is the Titanic kit. We're gonna start with the Titanic. They are a startup company. They are just beginning. I think they've only sold a few dozen kits so far. They order the pieces and then they arrange the different kits. They print out the cover, they paste it on, and then they ship this to you. It's very professional, but it still has this handcrafted, homemade feel to it, which, I, you know what, I kind of, I like that a little bit better than the industrialized, mass-produced kits that you see in the store. This has this nice, homemade touch to it. So here we go with the K-Bar, popping the first kit open. We're, of course, starting with the Titanic. I have not opened this yet. I don't know what's in it. I have only seen CGI renders of a finalized kit from this company. Before opening up, let's look at the cover. If you have questions or your kit is missing any pieces, please contact us. It's very professional, it's very tasteful. Uh, the model details, there are 733 hand-sorted new Lego elements. This is in 1 640th scale, and there should be color instructions inside. There we go. Everything seems to be well organized in these little Ziploc bags. Sorted by color. We have blacks and reds and whites and more reds. Then a single piece. This appears to be the bridge. These are gonna be the windows to the bridge, I'm sure. Under that, we have more white plates. We have some grays. And we have the browns and the yellows, which are gonna be decks and funnels. These are pretty much printed just like any other Lego kit. It's been probably a decade and a half since I built a Lego kit, but I, I still always maintained a soft spot for Legos. So this is a little bit of a nostalgia trip for me. I won't read the history of the Titanic here. I'm gonna let that be something saved for when you purchase this, although I guess you could just pause the screen. The instructions are very straightforward easy to understand and even contain the occasional historical photograph so you know what the part is that you're building. Looks like we're going to be starting with the anti-fouling below the waterline. A lot of reds. I've never watched a professional YouTube review of a Lego kit, so I don't know if they sort it ahead of time and, you know, lay out the pieces by step. I'm just gonna dive right into it. We're gonna see what we encounter along the way, maybe make some friends, make some enemies, but hopefully no one gets hurt.
I think this piece is going to end up becoming the keel. This is probably going to be the backbone of the ship. I guess this is the perfect opportunity to sort of talk about films that I made on my previous YouTube channel, which was um, was Jay Kilts way back in the day. I, I made the YouTube channel within the first year of YouTube's founding. I was one of the first handful of a few thousand people to make accounts. It was so different than what it is now. I was featured a few times. I had 13,000 subscribers, which today is nothing. Back then, that was pretty big. I made a video called Lego Titanic. It had a pretty high degree of success back in the day. It had somewhere around 12 or 13 million hits. I made it on a day when I was homesick in middle school and I decided to break open the Legos and make this stop animation movie. And it was, it was so goofy. All right, now here we're going to come on to uh, one of our first unique pieces, it seems. And that requires the brown bag. This piece right here is going to be the screw. In fact, in this case, it appears to specifically be the center screw. So we're going to stick that on, and then the rudder, or at least part of the rudder, is going right over top of that. I focused on a guy named James, who was fictional, and he, uh, someone kept giving him a backpack. I don't know, I made it up as I went. People kept asking in the comments, what's up with the backpack? And I'm like, you're just gonna have to wait and find out. And of course, I didn't know. We all had to wait and find out. what It was whatever I was gonna make it up to be. Someone actually flagged it on YouTube for being inappropriate. Adult content is what the notification from YouTube said. It said, we had to remove your video for adult content. I never got any more explanation from that. We actually built the engines. I wonder if there's gonna be any sort of uh, hatch that makes these visible from the outside. Maybe if you lift off the deck above, but these are the engines. We're adding these round studs to resemble the boilers. That's pretty cool. Now these are not placed accurately, which is quite okay. This is, I wouldn't expect that for something of this scale. It's just a fun representation so that once you have the completed kit, you know on the inside it's got engines and boilers. Moving on, now we're gonna start assembling the sides of the ship. Now with these side pieces, I'm starting to feel that rigidity. I can't tell you how many kits when I was a kid that I was assembling and it just snapped when I was adding pressure to two pieces. I had a sequel to it called Lego Lusitania and I had a behind the scenes video, Return to Lego Titanic or something like that. It was just having fun back when I was a kid. I think someone else re-uploaded those, so they're, they're still out there if you really want to go digging, but they're, they're cringy. I was working on Lego Britannic, which apparently was quite anticipated by people. During production of that, that is when that person flagged the videos and they were taken down, and it just disheartened me. I lost the enthusiasm for it. At this point, we are just about finished with the reds. We have these two red pieces left. We'll see if they come up later. But as you can see, this is a very technical kit. I appreciate how the bottom of the ship is smooth. There's no exposed studs. It's a very well-designed and well-crafted kit. The detailing on the screws is also quite good. The only thing I would say is I would like to see, instead of a black rod, this should be a red rod to keep consistent with the anti-fouling. We have detailing on the engines and the boilers. You're gonna be able to detach the upper structure from below the waterline, which will be pretty neat because that will allow you to make a waterline model of the ship. But if you detach the pieces, it'll have the boiler rooms exposed. Now these are not accurate boiler rooms. First off, there are only three boiler rooms here. The boilers are going the wrong way. Titanic would have had her boilers going parallel to the length of the ship, and there would have been six boiler rooms. But you know what, this is a Lego kit on a very small scale. You just have something standing in and representing. The next thing we're gonna be assembling is the black part of the hull, but we're starting with a bunch of tan pieces. 
It looks like what we're starting with here is the bow, the actual forepeak of the ship. The Lego Titanic that I made back in back in middle school, like I said, I cringe at it, but to be honest with you, it was a lot of fun to make, and the popularity of it made me really feel good. As much as I do cringe when I see people still posting about it on Facebook, I'm kind of proud that something that I did way back in middle school has still kind of got a cold following to it, and people are still sharing it around, and they are still talking about it fondly. All right, it appears that there's a lot of just placing pieces onto this for now that are going to be solidified on the next step. It's sort of like a trust fall, if you understand what I mean, because those pieces are just sitting on there and you don't know if you maybe missed a step and maybe these were supposed to be more solidly secured, but you're just trusting that the next step is gonna have you covered. I don't see why it wouldn't. Honestly, I believe that Lego is one of the most important toys for kids to have when they're young. Boys and girls, or model kits in general. They're very important for people uh, who, are, who are developing. These kits teach children how to follow instructions, follow directions, work with their hands, hand-eye coordination, and uh, engineering. Fortunately, Lego is also very popular among kids, so you can't go wrong with it. But unfortunately, we're seeing a decline in, in plastic model kits, because those, that really helps them develop and, and teaches them hand-eye coordination and, and following instructions, even more than Lego, because you have to paint the pieces, you have to assemble them, you have to glue them, there's tools involved. But Lego is a great place to start with kids and teaching them these important life skills, which honestly, Schools don't really put too much effort in teaching. This is a piece I've never seen before. And this goes right here on the bow to form the forecastle breakwater. And with that, we have now assembled the upper hull portion of the ship, as well as the forecastle, the poop deck, and the two well decks. We see slanted brown bricks to stand in for the stairwells going up to the poop deck. We have the lever pieces to act as the ship's cargo cranes, and we even have the docking bridge on the far stern. One by one smooth plates act as cargo hatches, and this gray gun piece acts as the forward anchor crane. We even have a pretty accurate mock-up of the forward anchors. With that, now we're continuing on to build the ship's superstructure. We're starting by laying down a complete layer of white plates. We then have to place these single long plates in. Now we have a plethora of plates to place in place. That sentence made sense, you know. These grill pieces are going to uh, give the impression of portholes along the superstructure, with the tiny ridges acting as the openings for the windows. That's a pretty clever detail. There's even detailing for the inside of the ADEC promenade, which is a nice detail showing that this kit is going the extra mile. There we go, now we get to use that unique wheelhouse part. 
The bases of the funnel are assembled by these two interlocking arm and uh, clamp pieces. Snap like this, and then the angle of the funnel is created by bending that down a tiny bit. With the four funnels and two masts assembled and added, the RMS Titanic is now finished. In this build, I didn't bother placing the lifeboats. There are 18 of them. They included um, the 16 of the standard lifeboats and two of the collapsibles, the two that go alongside the forward funnel. They don't have collapsibles C and D, which would have been inboard of the forward emergency boats. Now the boats are just placed on the deck. They don't snap into place, so they'll slide all around, which is why I didn't bother. So here it is, the Lego Titanic, 733 parts. I'm not quite sure how to rank it on a skill level considering I don't really assemble Lego kits all that much. This is difficult, but because of the size of the kit and because of the amount of parts, it's not a challenge, you can get through it in one night, two and a half hours of assembly time. Almost entirely comprised of small pieces. And uh, you're gonna have to work through those. There's a lot of flat pieces in this. There's a lot of one by ones. And uh, there's a lot of using technical pieces to really enhance the detail. But you're rewarded in the end with this exceptional model. They had to take some impressionistic license here because there's only so much you can achieve with Lego bricks at this scale. You really get the feel for what the Titanic was, and I'm looking forward to building the rest of these kits. Now that we have the Titanic done, her passengers are gonna need to be rescued. So the RMS Carpathia, a Cunard liner. This one has 261 Lego elements. It's also one 640 scale, so you can put it right next to the Titanic and they vibe with each other. This is a smaller box than the Titanic for obvious reasons. It's the same size box as the Edmund Fitzgerald here and as you can see there's only a few bags. There's really not a lot in here. It's a third of the size of the Titanic and because of that it's going to be even faster than a third of the time because it'll be easier to find the parts, it'll be easier to get through everything. It's a less complicated ship. So I imagine we'll be making this in about a quarter of the time. So far, the Carpathia is the only Cunard line ship available from Histobrick. Carpathia was built between 1901 and 1902, but the high point of her career was the rescue of Titanic survivors. She was en route to the Mediterranean when she received Titanic's distress calls, which she promptly answered and made all haste for Titanic's position. Carpathia was torpedoed and sunk in the First World War. On step 22, the hull is now finished. I would say it's the same quality as the Titanic. Nice detail on the propellers and the rudder. The curvature of the ship has been well accomplished. Now let's carry on to the superstructure. Got a couple loose pieces on this step. It appears that the funnel is going to be the same structure, using this hinged piece as the foundation that's going to create the angle on the funnel. And unlike the Titanic kit, it appears that the lifeboats are going to be fixed in place. So I'm gonna add those on this build.
So here she is, the RMS Carpathia. About 260 some bricks. It took probably somewhere around a half hour to 45 minutes to build her. If you've already built the Titanic, this is a piece of cake. But if this is the first kit from Histo Bricks that you are doing, it is a bit of a challenge. There are technical pieces, and almost every piece that you work with is quite small. Before we move on to the Britannic, let's take a step away from the 1910s and build the Edmund Fitzgerald, the famous freighter of the Great Lakes, lost in a terrible storm. All hands went down with her. This kit is 200 pieces more than the Carpathia, slightly less than double, but it actually comes with a bonus of Whitefish Lighthouse. As a little add-on to the kit, Whitefish Lighthouse was, of course, a part of the story of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Got the trusty K-Bar. All right. Seven bags and, as usual, our instructions. Once again, professionally printed. We have a history right up here. On reading it through, I realize it actually doesn't mention the connection of Whitefish Lighthouse. So I think if they do another issue of this, which I, I know they will, I think they should add that so people understand why that lighthouse is included. Clear illustrations, as always. Doesn't seem too complicated. We have 92 steps, including the lighthouse. So let's begin. That's around how many the Titanic had. Let's start her off. A bag full of whites. Two bags of burgundy. And then some miscellaneous other colors, predominantly yellow. But there is some gray and a green plate, which is going to be the base of the lighthouse. All these kits start off the same way, with a, a backbone mostly of red, with some side studs and some top studs, which is going to be the connection of the curved hull and the upper decks. The Edmund Fitzgerald was a cargo freighter on the Great Lakes from 1958 to 1975, when she disappeared in a terrible winter storm on Lake Superior while en route to Detroit. All 29 crew went down with the vessel and the only sign found of her at the time was an empty lifeboat. She sank about 17 miles away from Whitefish Point Light Station, which is why the lighthouse is included in this kit. With this, we have the forward section of the ship done. We're still missing the forward deck house, but that's coming next. It looks like there's gonna be a very clean cut between the two halves of the ship, using only studs going in here, and then two bricks to lock it on the sides, which is going to be great if you want to simulate how the ship broke in half. Perfect. Now we're moving on to the forward deck house, which is mainly going to be made of white bricks. Now we join the deck house onto the forward section of the hull and start adding some of the cargo hatches. So that's it. That's it. That's the forward section of the Edmund Fitzgerald. It's looking really nice in my opinion. Now it's time to move on to the after half. I'd greatly underestimated the length of the ship, because this is only the middle segment. This, I thought, was the forward half, and that still doesn't reach the end. This is a pretty long model. Now 
These kits are pretty solid through and through. There aren't any caverns or holes inside of the hull which adds significantly to the weight and rigidity of the construction. Now we're adding the numerous cargo hatches along her deck. The Edmund Fitzgerald, I don't know the exact number of cargo hatches she had, or if what we're seeing here is an accurate number, or if this is actually just a facsimile, given that it's scaled down and limited to what you can do with all the bricks. Whoopsies. If anyone does know, feel free to drop an answer in the comments. So far, we are doing 14 cargo hatches on this strip, and on the uh, forward section, we have five. So that puts us at 19 cargo hatches. There might still be more on the after part. And with that, we've now finished the midship section. This is a very long ship. Like I said, I really underestimated how long of a ship she was. Now, is it proper to refer to the ship as a her when it has an obviously masculine name such as Edmund? That's a good question, Tom. Moving on to the after part. The location of the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald was found shortly after its disappearance, and it was discovered that the ship had broken in two. It's unknown what exactly sank the ship, with theories ranging from rogue waves to striking an underwater shoal. And these two pieces slide together like puzzle pieces. They don't stud together, there's no connection. They just place together nicely. Moving on to the funnel now, only one funnel on this ship, and this is a shorter stack than the ones you'd see on the classic steamers that we've also been building. Now we're really nearing the finish line here, adding the final details to the deck house. So that's two more cargo hatches on this after bit, giving us a grand total of 21. So let me know in the comments, is 21 the accurate number? I suppose I could look it up myself, but where's the fun in that? It appears that she's finished. Let's move on to the lighthouse now. This is only going to be a few steps. This is super easy. The lighthouse is to scale with the Edmund Fitzgerald. So there's only so much detail you can get out of this. It's scaled up from the scale that we saw the Titanic and the Carpathia in. This is not going to be the same size as those ships. This is not going to be proper scale as those ships. With that, we've finished the Edmund Fitzgerald and the Whitefish Lighthouse. The length of this kit surprised me. I did not realize it would be this long. It is scaled up from the Titanic and the Carpathia, which we've seen so far, so you wouldn't be able to set them alongside each other and know that they're existing in the same universe. This is two and a half feet long, or 1,430 scale. It was a long and narrow ship, and that proved to be her weakness. As she was riding the waves, her hull snapped, and she went down with all hands. A beautiful cargo ship to add to your LEGO collection. 
We have one more LEGO kit to go through today, and that is the HMHS Britannic, a ship that is very personal to me, as I just finished directing a VR experience, which I'm sure most of you are aware about, but that's Britannic Patroness of the Mediterranean, available on Steam if you aren't familiar with it. Let's dig in, shall we? She was to be the final of the Olympic class trio, but instead was requisitioned as a hospital ship, sank in the First World War, and never saw a single paying customer. This kit is in the same scale as the Titanic and Carpathia 1640 scale, and it has 804 hand sorted Lego pieces. This is the biggest kit we're building today. This has more pieces than the Titanic. Understandably, with all the lifeboat gantry davits, the additional boats, and all of the hospital pieces to be added, I can understand why this would have a ton of extra parts. One last thing before diving into this one. Handwritten on the side is batch number one, number one. Meaning this is the very first of this Lego kit that has been manufactured by Histo Brick. I'm gonna have to hang on to this box. K-Bar time, as always. This is a different box than we saw with the Carpathia and the Edmund Fitzgerald. It's the one we saw the Titanic come in. All right, we have the wheelhouse once again in its own bag. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight individual bags. And then, once again, the finely printed instruction book. It does say RMS Britannic. I'm gonna make a suggestion that they change that. And then we have the usual history section. 84 steps, fewer than the Edmund Fitzgerald. Let's dive right in. If this is anything like the Titanic set, which I'm sure it will be, we're gonna end up building the red section first. So I'm only gonna open those bags so I don't have a massive pile to sort through. There will be a few black pieces. I'll open that bag, and then I'll leave the other bags until they're called for. The first step is always just monotonously putting these keel bits together. Same thing over and over again. One by two plates double stacked on top of each other, and then this six stud one by two. There it is. There's the keel length all together. Like we saw with the Titanic kit, this one comes with some low detail machinery on the inside. The triple expansion reciprocating engines and the boiler rooms. They're not exactly accurate, but given the scale, they're a nice representation. And with this, we've finished the subsurface part of the hull, the red anti-fouling section. We have the same interior details we saw on the Titanic kit, as well as the same propeller setup. Obviously, I mean, Titanic and Britannic have the same one, but it is assembled all the same way. Oddly though, the instructions were not the same steps. There was a lot more going back and forth between the two different sides of the hull on the Britannic set of instructions, whereas on Titanic, a lot of the one side was finished, and then we moved to the other, whereas it seemed almost every step we were alternating and building it symmetrically. I'm pleased with how much the engines resemble their real life counterparts, and the propeller setup is also quite nice. It looks like the only red pieces we have left for the set are going to be the crosses on the deck and on the side of the hull. And with that, we're moving on to the upper hull. There are a ton of small white plates. As far as skill level for building this, these are not a challenge. These are, are pretty easy, straightforward, the instructions are very clear. It's probably on the level of those architectural kits that you could get from LEGO. You know, the ones where you build like the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin or um, one of those falling water houses, something like that. It's probably on that level. It's more complicated than your standard LEGO kit made for kids. Gonna have some more complicated mechanical connections. I see since we're using tan pieces again, we're now building the well deck. It appears that it's going to be the aft well deck. I'm looking forward to seeing if he got the structure of the aft section of Britannic correct. 
I've seen a lot of replicas of the Britannic where they simply reuse the structure of Titanic's after section with the same well deck and the same poop deck and then simply paint it white. When that is in fact incorrect for Britannic, she did not have an aft well deck. Her aft well deck was actually enclosed but she had an additional structure on the stern. All right, here we go with step 48. I see we're finally starting to do the outer hull. And this is what is going to give us some real structural strength. We also see the first of our red crosses along the hull. They're just squares, but they serve the purpose. With the port side of the ship finished, we're moving on to the starboard side. When Britannic was converted into a hospital ship, her interiors were almost completely gutted. Large spaces like the first class lounge and dining room were divided into cubicles of offices and sleeping quarters, and sick bays were squeezed in wherever the crew could manage. It does appear that they went with the old Titanic layout for the aft well deck. We should have this area filled in with white, or at least as a promenade, with the deck going overhead. But you know what? For a Lego kit, you don't notice it at this scale. The bow section is nice and relatively accurate. We are now moving on to the superstructure of the Britannic, starting by laying out these large white plates across the base of the structure. Just like we saw on the Titanic, we're now going to be adding these white grill one by two plates. And these are going to simulate portholes all along the hull. And there will be a ton of these to plug into it. Those are finally done. Now we're moving up to the ADEC promenade. Looks like we're gonna have the same level of detail we saw on the Titanic kit. Okay, it looks like I might be missing one of the white grill pieces. The guy at Histo Bricks pretty much rushed this kit through development for this video. So I don't hold it against him. If you ever encounter a missing piece, their contact info is right here on the box. That's quality assurance. So I'm gonna carry on. Maybe I'll find it. I've had a hard time finding certain pieces at times, so maybe I will encounter it and I know I'll be able to get a replacement part from the manufacturer. Here comes the wheelhouse, choo-choo!
now it's time to make the funnels. We're gonna be following the same pattern that we did in making Titanic's funnels. With these two dowels going through the holes of these rounded one by twos. Britannic's funnels were not exactly yellow. They were a bit of an off yellow, more of a, a mustard look, but this yellow was good. There we have it. The HMHS Britannic is complete. I can stick the anti-fouling segment of the hull onto the bottom, but honestly I like looking at Britannic more as a waterline model. The lifeboats on the deck are loose just like we saw with the Titanic, which I didn't bother putting on. As you know by now, I don't like loose parts. I actually noticed this as I was packing it up, but the piece I'm missing on Britannic I was given an extra piece of on Titanic, so even Steven. Let's just add this in real quick. This is by far the most complicated of the four that I just built. The deck is extremely detailed for such a finely scaled kit. If you've played Britannic Patroness of the Mediterranean, you know by now just how cluttered HMHS Britannic's deck was. There were vents everywhere, there were lifeboats, there were gantry cranes. You had a really hard time getting around on the deck. And this LEGO model actually reflects that pretty well. It is difficult when you start getting in there and trying to place the final details. It's hard to navigate around the fine details that are already on the ship, but that's no fault of the kit. That's simply the history of the ship. This is a beautiful model. It has me half tempted to go ahead with the stop animation Lego Britannic I was working on. Half tempted, not fully tempted, don't worry. I especially appreciate the knowledge that the designer had of the actual ship. It is missing the forward port gantry davits, just like the real Britannic. It's flying the white flag, which is going to be simulating the hospital Red Cross flag that the Britannic really would have been flying. You can even see the number plate, the red identification plate that was seen under the wheelhouse. The attention to detail on this kit is extremely fine. This is very well done. This is Histo Brick's most recent kit and it shows that their skill has only been improving as they continue to develop these kits for us. Since filming this video I spoke with Histo Brick and they are correcting the aft well deck on future batches. They've also made corrections to the forward well deck changing the two cargo hatches to the more accurate third class entry deck house. So here we have it, the four ships in the Histo Brick fleet. Coming soon is His Majesty's transport ship Olympic in her dazzle paint camo. That is something I'm looking forward to building as well. The two ships from the Olympic class and the Carpathia are the same scale together. The Edmund Fitzgerald, which was not as long as the Titanic, has been scaled up. So here in our assembled kits is longer than the Titanic, but like I said, was not in real life. The Whitefish Lighthouse was an amazing bonus. I had a great time assembling them. These were my first Lego kits in about 10 or 15 years. I did not have any difficulty with them. I would not say that they were a serious challenge, but they are definitely some of the most challenging kits I remember building. Great for kids, great for people who love ships, great for people who are Lego enthusiasts. I know there are a lot of them out there. For anyone who loves Legos and loves ships, this is a must have for your collection. You can find them on www.titanichg.com. Go up to the store and click Histobrick.